Assalamu alaikum everyone. I'll give everyone just about a few seconds to um, log on. Okay, assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, thank you for joining me today. My name is Fariha Saidi and I will be your host for today's uh, drop point session. Um, drop point sessions are a monthly based uh, program offered by Being Me and drop point sessions, we are focused on training and development. It primarily focuses on professional and personal development with occasional sessions relating to um, visioning and personal growth as viewed through an Islamic lens. And um, the topic for this month's drop point session is building spiritual resilience. Uh, and we'll, we'll begin today's program, inshallah, by a Quran recitation. And the Quran recitation will be done by Sister Ashley, um, also known as Sister Aisha Al Maryam, converted to Islam almost 20 years ago. She is a teacher by trade who worked at several Ottawa Islamic schools and enjoys volunteering in her community. She's a former board member of um, Isha Learning Center, Ottawa's first Quran school for women, as well as children. Um, Sister Aisha is a busy mother of four who understands the daily struggles mother's face and appreciates that shared support from her community. We will hear from Sister um, Aisha right now. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahim Wadduha والليل إذا سجى ما ودأك ربك وما قلا ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولا سوف يؤتيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك تيما فأوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيما فلا تقهر وأما سائل فلا تنهر وأما بنئمة, وأما بنئمة ربك فحدث Chapter 93 The Forenoon By the forenoon and by the night when it is still your Lord has neither forsaken you nor hated you. And indeed, the hereafter is better for you than the, than the life of this present world. And verily, your Lord will give you so that you shall be, be well pleased. Did he not find you an orphan and give you refuge? And he found you unaware and guided you. And he found you poor and made you rich. Therefore, treat not the orphan with oppression and repulse not the beggar and procreate and proclaim the grace of your Lord. Thank you very much, Ashley, appreciate it. Um, thank you to our audience for joining in. Um, think, uh, today is our drop point session. Um, I ask you to all to, if you have any questions and comments, uh, you write those under our comment session on Facebook Live right now. At the end of, um, at the, at the end of our session, inshallah, our speaker will answer those questions. As I mentioned earlier that the topic for today's program is building personal um, resilience. The purpose of the session is to provide you with various skills to deal with trials and difficulties in your workplace and keep your body and faith strong. In addition to learning how we, in addition, we will learn how to grow our mental straight, uh, strength and build personal resilience. So without any further ado, let me introduce our speaker, Amber Rahman, to present this topic in more depth. Amber Rahman is a community activist with a focus on youth leadership in the Muslim community. Amber organized her first leadership conference in Montreal, Quebec at the age of 17 on women and leadership in the Muslim community. And since then, she has spent over 20 years working to help empower youth to use their voices for change and to seek their full potential. As an educator, student, mental health adv advocate, and student volunteer, Amber will discuss what it means to develop personal resilience. We're very happy to have Amber here with us today. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for joining us. Assalamu Very nice to join you as well. Thank you so much. We'll hear from you now. Thank you. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, my name is Amber Rahman and I will be speaking to you about how to develop personal resilience. Um, the definition of resilience is the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties. Uh, being resilient isn't a trait, rather it is a deliberate practice. Every day we have to make the choice to incorporate behaviors and thoughts that lead to resiliency and growth. It is an ability that can be developed to adapt to stressful situations or to overcome the effects of an ad adversity. Resiliency is using coping strategies to return to mental well-being and physical strength. Before we go into how to increase re resiliency in our life, I thought I would speak a little bit about myself and how I tapped into resiliency over the course of my life. It's always good to have a relevant example uh, rather than ha having someone, you know, kind of explain things to you and you don't even know whether or not they have <laughs> some experience with that. So resiliency I, is something that I like to practice on a regular basis. Um, so in my life, uh, I have uh, lived in a way that I try to do multiple things at the same time. And the purpose of that is so that I can always have mental resiliency. Currently, I'm a librarian at an Islamic school, uh, and at the same time, I'm also a full-time student uh, studying psychology. I've had a lot of obstacles in my life growing up, uh, but obstacles are just milestones that are really there to help us overcome things that uh, overcome things, and it brings us closer to Allah. I have a physical physical disability, and I I had a hard time doing some things that are easier for others. For example, it was very hard for me to get my driver's license or um, post-secondary education was quite a challenge for me for many, many reasons. I had a lot of societal pressure because of my disability from whether or not I would get married or have children to whether or not I would get an education or be able to hold a job. There was quite a bit, bit stacked against me, um, but thankfully when Allah gives you challenges, he also has a plan for you and he gives you strength to bear those challenges. That is his promise. Though it is human to wonder what will happen, I learned early that Allah had a plan and I had to have faith and trust in this plan. Allah does not uh, place a burden on a soul greater than it can bear. That is an ayah from the Quran. So in Surah Baqarah, ayah 286. With his mercy, I got through a lot of the things people worried, worried about for me. Alhamdulillah, I have been married for about 21 years. I have children who are adults now and I am in school finally, alhamdulillah. But none of these things are my doing. This is all a part of Allah's plan and I have been just been able to be a bl uh, blessed to be a part of it. Allah has promised, verily after hardship comes ease. That's Surah 94, um, Ayah 6. Giving, um, giving ourselves that ability to be happy um, comes from many things. As I mentioned, I am a full-time student and I work full-time. I also have a family that needs a mom and volunteer commitments that I like to do. Uh, and that is what I'd like to do, talk to you about. When Allah gives us the blessing of time, we have to use it. We have, when he blesses us with uh, the ability to serve others, we have to exercise it. I have a serious passion for working for my community. And if I'm not involved in endeavors related to my community work, then I feel a sort of emptiness that grows in me. And when I struggle with low levels of depression or feeling of uh, loneliness, I find that community work allows me to focus on something productive other than my own self. This makes me feel like I belong in the bigger picture and helps me connect with others. And through synergy, I find that whatever I'm going through will pass. So my strategy for the last decade has been um, that there are th three things that I always need for personal balance. I need to be involved in the community, uh, peace be Allah. I have to be in school to achieve personal goals. Uh, Allah knows I'll be one of those 80 year olds still uh, in school um, and work in, working in an environment that I can make, in, make a difference. It seems a little nuts to have so much um, going on at the same time, but I find I need all these things in my life simultaneously, or I feel incomplete. For the past seven, seven years, at different intervals in my life, I have done this process three times of having all three things simultaneously running. But I cannot do this alone. My resiliency does not have to look like yours. My schedule may seem crazy to some, but my mental health and well-being, this is uh, 
comes from how I live. And my husband and my children are ex extremely supportive of the choices I've made and are allies and which, which makes it easy for me to do what I do. They see how it, happy it makes me and they're there to support. So how do we master the ability to do what we want consistently, slowly, and to have the impact we want in our lives? How do we start strat strategizing to overcome our personal issues of procrastination or deal with different levels of anxiety and depression outside the normal coping strategies or medica medical in interventions that are out there? How do we change our worldview that we, we, when we see our challenges, we see them as opportunities rather than obstacles? Resins resiliency is about facing hardship and rebuilding after the toughest storms. But resiliency is not a constant. It doesn't have to be because constancy is something that comes uh, when we work hard and work towards something. And resiliency is literally about falling down and dusting yourself off and trying again. The key to developing personal resiliency is, um, and it is a crucial skill that we must lean into our allies like our community, parents, friends, teachers, colleagues for support. Ibn Abbas said, the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, take advantage of five before five, your youth before your old age, your health before your illness, your riches before your poverty, and your free time before your work, and your life before your death. I always heard this hadith and never truly understood the impact of it until I started getting older. When time started running out and I started seeing, oh, my 20s have passed and now my 30s. What will I do next? What will, I, what will happen next that will make me feel like I did what Allah set me out to do? We can learn to do more with our time. If we make time for what is important, there's an automatic increase of barka in our time. Before saying that I don't have the time for something, evaluate, am I prioritizing my time correctly? Did I take advantage of my less busy days? Did I add something valuable to my life when I wasn't so busy? There's a leadership mantra that I, um, I find very useful and I, um, and I feel like that this has helped me um, gain that footing on, uh, on how I like to be active. It's called biased for action. And this, and I encourage everybody to Google this term. There's a lot of written material out there related to it, but essentially it is about getting started and making decisions that help you move forward. Biased for action or bias to action. Not everyone has to be, not everything has to be done perfectly every time because doing things well should motivate us to keep moving forward. That means your work is full of quality, but you're not obsessed about it. Uh, sometimes a desire for perfection can prevent us from trying new things or taking on volunteer work. But sometimes we have to realize that perfection is only with Allah and all we can do is try. So I encourage everyone to accept challenges. Push yourself to do more. Allah will give you the capacity. We must remember that we have the same number of hours in our days as Einstein and Imam Ghazali. And they struggled with many ch challenges within their societies, within themselves, but still man managed to be role models for intellectual contribution and development. According to historians, Einstein was not even someone who, um, you know, um, had an easy life. He failed to talk till the age of four. And, claim, um, and there's also um, the, the fact that he did not read till the, about the age of nine. He went on to become one of the greatest scientific minds of our time. And it is, if he was not resilient, I'm sure he wouldn't have gotten as far as he did. But no one's asking you to do this alone. Don't do it alone. Seek a buddy. Recognize areas in which you can use support and seek it. I have done school part-time with my husband for two years. Last year, I took a math class with my son. And I, you know, one day he can tell people, um, who got the higher mark. And I travel with my daughter to Islamic conferences. So I never do these things alone. They are a cir my circle of power and that makes everything easier for me. No family, no problem. Find resiliency in your social connections, attend seminars with friends, go to conferences and classes and make a new social network that can, that can lift you. If you have challenges, 
look for allies. Allah has scattered the world with good people willing to support and help. Before we go out to others, it's very important to learn when to stop and rest and when to take breaks. That's something I've learned from um, a life of, uh, you know, filled with activities, that there are times when we have to stop and think for ourselves. Am I doing things just for the sake of doing them, just for the sake of saying that I filled my day, or am I doing them purposefully? Sometimes it's good to step back, take time off, and reset and recoup from larger under undertakings such as exams or events or even just um, everyday activities. So to promote growth, um, I recommend filling your time with things that promote growth. Um, any activity you do, try to remove yourself from it a bit. Assess in, in the activity that you're engaged in if what you're doing is good for either building bonds or uh, spending time with friends and families, for example, watching movies. Um, sometimes, you know, we um, end up binge watching TV shows or watching movies and stuff like that. And it can be a waste of time, but we have to stop and think sometimes, okay, if I'm overly obsessed with work or overly uh, relaxing, there has to be a middle ground and I have to find that middle ground. We have to figure out when it is Im uh, important to spend time networking. We have to remember when it's a time to learn something new. Um, and we have to spend time um, reinforcing old skills, right? So all of these things come together um, and make that complete uh, connection for us of um, how to develop personal resiliency. Even though we are not great multitaskers as human beings, as I've learned in my psychology classes, um, we do, ha however, have the ability to, to do things simultaneously. So um, I don't have an excuse when my, you know, say laundry is falling apart and everything is going crazy and I have to do my classes, that sometimes I can take the time to manage both things at the same time that I, you know, one can either clean their room or fold laundry or uh, do some other uh, mundane task while, while attending classes or doing things um, separately. Um, so I found these eight tips online of how to be resilient. And I really like this list that I found. Um, it, it, these are tips according to the US Department of Health and Human Services um, and Public Health Safety. I like this list because we don't think of resiliency as a response to actual emergencies. Uh, resiliency is much of a me medical tool as eyeglasses or other me medical aids. So according to this, um, social support and close friend, uh, relationships with family and friends is part of resiliency. People who, uh, who have close support, um, support and strong connections with family and friends are able to get help during tough times and also enjoy their relationships during everyday life. This is a complicated thing right now because due to COVID, we are all stuck in a bubble individual bubbles and we can't reach out. But we can be creative. We can uh, lean into our community by attending online halakas. I've actually found the Muslim community has gotten stronger and smaller um, throughout this process across Canada, United States. I've been able to attend so many sessions of shayukh, um, of uh, you know sisters gatherings or sisters initiatives um, to uplift um, in an attempt to get us all connected. So even though we are all separated, we can have some togetherness thanks to technology. It is great to call friends and family over Google Hangout or Zoom and maintain our networks. And it's very important to do so. Even if we feel like, well, if I'm stuck at home, I don't want to see anyone and I don't want to do anything. I think it's very important for us to try to lean into our support groups especially right now, uh, especially while we're trying to maintain distance to be healthy. The next tip is the ability to manage strong feelings and impulses. People who are able to manage strong emotions are less likely to get overwhelmed, frustrated, or aggressive. People who are able to manage feelings can still feel sadness or loss, but they also have to be able to find healthy ways to cope and heal. So my tip for this is give yourself time to process emotions. Don't make decisions in anger or sadness. Consult people you look uh, you trust when you are having doubts. 
Walk away from problems and do something fun or different until you have you can return to it with a better state of mind. So ultimately, don't make rash, rash decisions and don't let a mood or um, an idea overcome your entire uh, state. Good problem solving skills is the next tip. People, pro uh, people problem solve on a daily basis. Thinking, planning, and solving problems in an organized way um, are important skills. Problem solving skills contribute to feeling uh, a feeling of independence and self competence. My tip for this is read leadership and self development books like Designing Your Life or The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I recommend these books because I have personally worked out of these books and I have taught them to uh, teens for about four or five uh, about five years. Now I have found that when you are um, reading material that helps you cope with things or figure out how to become better at uh, being having self-efficacy, it really helps with uh, evaluating how you're spending your time, how you're uh, splitting your time between what's important and what's not. And we become efficient um, and also developing a better work ethic, right? When you are reading leadership books, it's not necessarily about leader leading others. It's about leading oneself first, because how can we lead others if we first don't know how to lead ourselves? The next tip is feeling in control. After a chaos or a disaster or some sort of emotional trauma, it can be useful to engage in activities that help people regain a sense of control. This will help support the healing and recovery process. My tip for this is turning to Allah when you are feeling things are going out of control. Read the Quran, join a halakha, seek Islamic classes that are being offered throughout the community and um, the world's sphere online right now. Asking for help and seeking resources. Resor resourceful people will get uh, needed help more quickly if they know what questions to ask and are good, good problem solvers and have a good social network to reach out to. So in this one, um, I actually spent a lot of time in this uh, in this tip or the space actually, because I strongly believe that when you are doing something, um, you and you're doing many things actually uh, simultaneously, there is an, uh, a tendency to get overwhelmed. And I find talking to your professors or your boss or even your parents and asking for support or asking for le leniency when you're overwhelmed really, really helps with feeling like you have some sort of control. And also there aren't many times when you ask for help that someone will say, no, I don't wanna help you. Uh, professors, uh, I always tell my children, uh, teachers and professors are actually extremely merciful people and their job is to help you. So if you're having issues managing things rather than giving up or feeling overwhelmed by yourself alone, ask for help. Explain your situation to your uh, professor or even your boss um, and see where that will take you. Ask your parents to cook for you or, um, you know, just listen to you or make the offer you. And that really, really helps. Now, the next tip is seeing yourself as resilient. Sometimes people may feel helpless and powerless. Being able to see yourself as resilient rather than uh, helpless or a victim can help build psychological resilience. Now, for this one, my tip is, if you have, if you're having a hard time seeing yourself as resilient, think back to a time when Allah pulled you out of a difficult situation and find strength in the fact that Allah never abandons his, his servants. He has prom promised us in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 186, if any of my servants ask you about me, tell them, the, uh, the Lord says, I am near. I accept the prayers of those who pray. Let, the, let my servants answer my call and believe in me and perhaps they, uh, and perhaps they may know the right direction. I find, find this ayah very useful because sometimes you just forget. Allah knows that we forget, so he reminds us. So when we can't remember the last time we were resilient, remember the last time Allah pulled us out of trouble or um, the number of times he pulled us out of things, right? Um, coping with stress in healthy ways. That is the next tip. People get, uh, get feelings of um, pleasure and self-worth from doing things well. Strategies that use positive and meaning meaningful ways to cope are better than which can be harmful. 
So my tip is take care of your body. Try to reduce things that are harmful like social media or gaming and add physical activity and increase nutritious foods. If you don't know what nutritious foods are good for you or what your body type is, it's good to start researching these things. Just the idea of starting to do something that's growth related um, helps you uh, develop some resiliency in that sense. Now, the final tip is helping others finding a positive meaning in life, helping others and finding a positive meaning in life, positive emotions like gratitude, joy, kindness, and love, and contentment can come from helping others. Acts of generos generosity can ma add meaning and purpose to your life, even in the face of tra tra tragedy. So my tip for this is, and I can't emphasize enough, is volunteering, volunteering, volunteering. We can do more when we're volunteering and those that the environment that we are volunteering in, sometimes we think that we are giving our time. No, actually that time is helping us. It is for our own almost selfish reasons that we should be volunteering because volunteering is more for our inner selves than for anything outside of ourselves because things happen whether or not we're a part of it, but we make things better for ourselves when we are involved. Remember that when Allah takes something away from us, he replaces it with something better. So Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us with many abilities. Um, he has blessed us with a lot of time, especially right now during COVID, we are all free um, and it's a time for us to develop and grow. And I find that if we focus on ourselves and growth um, before we go out to do other things, um, then we will be able to be better contrib contributors to society and we can be better uh, to ourselves, to our families. Um, I hope you are able to exercise your resiliency muscle and this talk was helpful. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much, Amber. What a beautiful um, talk. I kept taking notes because there were so uh, so many important points that you mentioned um, in this um, talk. Um, so I would like to remind our audience to please um, write your questions and your comments um, under the comments section on Facebook Live. Um, I'll read those questions to Sister Amber and I've already received a few questions which I'll be asking her very soon. Uh, but before I do that, I would like to let everyone know that um, we have virtual open house with Being Me. Being Me is hosting a virtual open house. Um, and you will be able to attend, um, register for this at 10 pmcom like down this web, like you can, um, at the end of this uh, poster, it's at 10 pmcom Please go there to reserve uh, for this program. And the dates are there as well. We also have Legacy Tour. Um, Legacy Tour will be on December 20th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can also register for this at 10 pmcom This event will be live on Facebook. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in so far. Uh, thank you, Amber, for having uh, for uh, presenting on such an important topic and also uh, covering some very important points uh, for us uh, today. Thank you for sharing your story as well, the story that you shared in the beginning. I think it was very uh, encouraging and definitely very um, strong and encouraging um, for everyone to keep in mind that uh, there are issues that we all may be facing, either personal or in professional life, but the important point is to kind of have the resilient mind towards it and to be able to move on and um, with our daily uh, life. Um, but sometimes it's to build that resilient mind to get that people when they have, where they're either having like you know issues with their professional, their personal lives, to build that mindset. What are some uh, what were some helpful uh, tips that you've received that helped you um, in this process that you would like to share with other people um, that to get them started with building that resilient mind. So I think the biggest thing about being resilient um, or developing resiliency is for us to remember that when we see a situation, um, we can make a situation much worse by just our perception of it. So first things first is we have to step back and ask Allah for help um, and then assess, is the situation really, really terrible? Is uh, what I'm going through um, something that doesn't have a resolve? Um, resiliency is about recognizing all the places where we can make changes and not necessarily worry about the things that are not in our control. 
So making um, that effort to write down things that you can change. Uh, the one of the biggest things that I've learned from all my uh, leadership books uh, that I have read or covered or taught is that um, when we start making a list of things that we can control versus things we cannot control, the number one thing that we can control in our um, in our uh, undertakings is ourselves. So starting internally, uh, before we look at any situation outside, be it for marriage or be it for professional, uh, you know, challenges, uh, you know, being passed up for a promotion or, you know, not being recognized for the hard work we do, then we have to sit back and recognize, okay, well, I think it's time for me to just focus on myself and Allah will provide the reward. Allah will find me a way through it. Great. Yes, um, absolutely true. I think um, it, it is definitely a hard process, but um, it would definitely is also a process that would be worth all the hardship. Um, I, you briefly mentioned in your uh, presentation about sometimes just um, taking a break, right? Um, you do feel overwhelmed, like building the resilient mind is great, but at the same time, um, we sometimes, it happens with everyone, whether you're a student or you're um, working as a professional or anything, it sometimes is just like you have so many things on your plate that it gets exhausting and you wanna like take a break. You wanna put everything on a side and take a break. Um, when you do that, does that go against being resilient um, or is this also part of being resilient? So sometimes just let go of things, you let go of tests, or take this out of your things, out of your list and just give us some time and just to reflect it. Um, it's a really great question, actually, because we uh, we have a tendency of getting obsessive with uh, whatever we do. Um, so balance is actually key um, in the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, they uh, start with, you know, the, the book starts with um, simple steps like uh, um, being proactive and begin with the end in mind and uh, put first things first. Uh, but the last step in that is sharpening the saw. And sharpening the saw literally means that when you are seeing yourself as a tool that's being used in, you know, in the world or in your life, you have to take the time to pull back. You have to sharpen the saw by resting, by developing your own personal skills, by relaxing, by figuring out how to make yourself positively focused without um, taking on negativity. There are many people who have a tendency of uh, being dis destructive. And I think we have so many destructive things around us that we can be doing. Like, for example, you know, spending you know, half the day on TikTok or, um, or on Instagram or something like that. Those things um, are neutral things to do. Um, don't necessarily fall in the haram category or halal uh, or, you know, uh, overly rewarding category. Um, but they can be things that consume us. Um, so it's good to recognize um, what is, uh, what is it that we're doing? If what we're doing is actually resting or if it's something that's going to, uh, be harmful to us. Um, so resting is very important, uh, but make sure the rest is constructive. It's good for you. It doesn't always have to be prescribed. It can't be like, okay, well today I will do six minutes of yoga and 10 minutes of, you know, running and, you know, 14 minutes of, uh, you know, writing. Uh, I think it's very important to just, when you're relaxing, be unstructured, but aware that if you're going towards a negative sense of relaxation, um, then to step back and, and uh, reevaluate how to do it in a way that it helps you feel restful that the next day when you are, or the next week when you're back on the saddle of uh, doing whatever you're doing, um, that you have more strength rather than less. True. Yes. Um, thank you. Um, uh, else, you mentioned something else in your uh, presentation that um, it resilient and also um, our emotions and mental status also impacts a lot in being resilient. Um, this sometimes being under a lot of stress or being um, emotionally sad does that prevent us from being uh, resilient? Definitely. So our moods obviously affect everything. Um, everything we do is uh, from our perspective. And if our perspective is, um, you know, um, buried in sadness or anger or hurtfulness, then that will be something that's going to, or stress, you know, if, if you're 
um, not experiencing any of those things, but you're still very stressed, uh, that can take away from um, trying to be resilient. Um, as I mentioned earlier, resiliency is not a trait, it's a practice. Every day you can, you know, uh, feel like you either are doing more towards it or less, um, but we have to constantly see it as a, a, a wave that goes up and down and we have to keep developing it and keep working on it. Um, I find the reason why I have to stay so busy is because I do experience those things where I sometimes I feel overwhelmed or I feel very, very sad or, about different things, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, there are things Allah has made easy for me, but there were, there were things that were hard. And sometimes, you know, as a human being, you kind of just focus on the hard parts and not recognize um, some of the things that Allah has uh, granted us to make things easy. So it's about just having a mindset of, um, uh, you know, changing things slowly and recognizing that change is a constant. Um, and it can happen if we just keep working at it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, building a resilient mindset, a resilient mindset, um, it also comes to start with building yourself, your personality, your character, developing that um, as a person. And you mentioned something in the beginning when you shared your own story. I hope you don't mind me asking when you said um, that there are a lot of challenges that you face from other people mainly due to the disability that you have or to issues or any um, that you mentioned people made assumptions, people uh, made comments, and those assumptions, comments could be harmful and very hurtful towards um, ourselves and developing our personality. How did you uncope or deal with those um, comments that you've received from other people, those assumptions, and you didn't let them um, impact the version of, uh, the perception of yourself that you have? So I've always felt that if I surround myself with the right people, they're kind of a buffer between myself and what people say, because um, I think there's a, a saying some, something to the effect that if um, if you're if you don't have people who dislike you or people who have uh, who are speaking uh, against you, then you're doing something wrong. Um, yeah. So I, I find that you know you have to constantly keep doing yourself authentically doing what you do well um, and focusing on the fact that. Allah has given you skills that other people don't know about um, and exposing those skills and those, uh, those you know, um, emotional states of yourself to people that are around you is very important because those people are your buffer, your community that will help you get through those things. So to deal with negativity, I think it's the best way to deal with it is surrounding yourself with uh, people that are able to do um, that support that you uh, are able to provide that support that you need and also um, making sure that you are also relying on Allah right uh, Allah is uh, giving you your challenges so he can uh, make them easy he can make them light he can make them a strength um, mm -hmm. and we have to use our challenges exactly for that uh, exactly. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that, um, Amber. That um, goes right to the next point that I have, um, or next question where you mentioned uh, one of the points that you, seven points that you gave here, one of them were building uh, strong relationships, building with your either community or your friends or your family, and building those relationships you said that it helps you to build that uh, resiliency. And how, uh, what I'm going to change, sometimes for those people who are having this uh, hard, um, this hard time building those relationships, whether it be with family or with friends, to help them to be resilient, what are some tips that you could give them to help them to build that relationship with the family or to build that, um, con the concept of resilience? How, how, what are your thoughts? So I find um, a lot of the stuff related to resiliency has to do with how much we live in our own heads. Sometimes we think that some situations are very, very bad just because we've made them worse in our heads. Sometimes some situations are bad and there's no denying um, that. But those are challenges that Allah has placed on us that we, we can try to work through. Sometimes with uh, relationships, it's important to recognize that if something is good for you, that 
you know, you have to work on it. But if something is negative um, and takes away from you or chips away at your spirit, it's good to give yourself space. So it doesn't mean that we need to be resilient with only the people that we know. Um, sometimes it's important to just throw ourselves in situations where we meet new people. Uh, for example, as I mentioned, join halakas, um, join virtual gatherings right now. And it's actually very important to recognize sometimes when you're volunteering, you end up meeting people that you would not believe, right? Um, yeah. Sometimes we cannot solve our social networks. We cannot figure out what's going on in our family. We cannot move away from the problems of our you know, existing community and stuff like that. So then I encourage everyone to always just keep looking towards um, finding new community uh, to be a part of, right? Uh, and being part of a new community means that you're constantly growing your own community. That does not mean you go and start a new Muslim community or something like that. I mean that you're constantly seeking others. You know, there are, um, if you're in university, there's clubs, there's groups. When you're working, um, you know, you can develop uh, networks uh, for empowering women, or um, there's groups that uh, you know, for example, there's TEDx women and uh, other groups like that. Um, seek resiliency in in social connections through different means. If the ones that you are um, actually uh, familiar with at the moment uh, are a little challenging to you, but still keep working on those things because sometimes, as I said, we are stuck in our own heads and we don't even realize. <clears throat> pardon me. We don't even realize how much <clears throat> we have to um, just move forward and things will just get better yeah that's uh, that's actually such a great point that you shared and i think that's one of the things that has helped me to build that um or, or to help me in the process of uh not to say of building your resilient mindset it's sometimes we do it's if we are having a difficult time either building that relationship or not everyone is always on the same page that we are we might we are going on our own way and if someone else is going into our own way i think it's better to move on create that different um community community in the sense of that the, your own communities and like different people um that that is a great point actually it helped me through um it's been very helpful for me through this process um amber thank you so much for um sharing some really great points i i we still have some time so i'm gonna ask one uh just one last question um you give some great reasons of why it's important about <coughs> excuse me, to build a personal, uh, build personal resilience um, in personal life and also in uh, professional um, life. But if I could ask you uh, one question would be, if we're having a, a difficult time, let's say at workplace, for instance, if workplace that um, the workload or the system that we're in at work, it, prevents us from getting closer to God um, or from a praying, for instance, um, how can we have that resiliency, but also kind of deal with the situation that we're at? So I think is um, one of the things I maybe I didn't emphasize enough was um, taking things one step at a time or um, breaking down things so that each task seems smaller um, and easy to do so that you're focused on the task rather than the big overall overall problem or the issue. Um, starting small always helps. Um, developing that network helps. So if you're having difficulty at work uh, with colleagues or with your boss or something like that, um, then seek allies elsewhere at work. Um, you know, have uh, other people that you can talk to um, or people who can help you sort through things. Sometimes um, environments get toxic and we have to recognize that some things are toxic. You know, if you're not allowed to pray, if you're not allowed to uh, exercise, you know, your faith, we live in Canada and there are so many rights and responsibilities, you know, that are placed on us. Um, and part of them is, you know, um, our part of our rights is our religious freedom. Um, so ensure that your re religious freedom is being protected. Know yourself, know your uh, rights, know your, um, your uh, st uh, strengths. Um, and, uh, you know, develop that network that can be supportive to you. And as I mentioned, sometimes, you know, um, 
it's okay if things are toxic at, at times and that you have to step back and uh, pull away from the situation. Um, either, you know, find, look for something better. And Mikda, um, my last thing that I mentioned in my talk was when Allah takes something away, he replaces it with something better. So Mikda, uh, for exactly that, um, you know, well, Allah, please make my life easier. And also, give me something that will replace my hardship with something better or reward me for the for the uh the commitments that i've had uh throughout this uh ordeal right and i find that really really strengthens us and um even though we are experiencing something um and um not necessarily able to see the end of the tunnel. Once we get out of it, when we look back, we will see a series of events that, you know, that made perfect sense. And uh, everything we're experiencing is part of the bigger picture. Perfect. Thank you so much for that great answer. And um, thank you for providing us with information of why it's important to build that resilient mindset and develop that uh, resiliency um, as individuals. Thank you so much for your time. It was great talking to you, Amber. It was very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you to our audience for staying with us thus far. Um, please make sure that you join us for our upcoming uh, programs, our upcoming drop points and other programs that we have with Being Me. Um, just to give everyone another reminder about the virtual open house that Being Me will, be, will host, the virtual open house uh, has different dates. You can register for that um, at attanpm.com. That's the website where you'll be able to register for all the programs provided by Being Me. You, um, that those are the dates. So we have December 20th, um, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We also have the 22nd, 24th, 26th, 29th. Um, those are the dates that and the times uh, that you can see here on the poster. Uh, please do register at tanbeup.com. Um, the next program that we have uh, that is upcoming is Legacy Tour. Legacy Tour is December 28th and 9th. 30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you'll also, this program will be live on Facebook, but you'll also be able to register for the program at attendbm.com. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, staying with us thus far. Thank you uh, to our speaker, to our Quran reciter, and to our IT help. Uh, so I'm gonna close off the program, inshallah, until next time. Um, Subhanaka, Allahumma bihamdika, ashhadu an la ilaha inta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day. Take care.